Hello, I'm Ian Graham. I'm a principal engineer with the Systems Engineering Group here at Tate. One of the impacts since digital radio really began to take a foothold in the LMR market in the 1990s has been the sheer number of standards that have become available. The various standards differ in terms of modulation methods, symbol rates and channel sharing methods they prescribe. While choice is good, the sheer number of digital standards available today makes it hard to know which one is best for a given customer application. I'm going to run through two widely used digital standards today, DMR and Tetra, and do a comparison of those to show where each one fits. So first of all, what is DMR? DMR is an Etsy standard, low cost, low complexity, professional digital radio solution designed to replace analog FM two-way radio. The DMR standards were published in 2005 and there are three tiers specified. Tier two and tier three are the ones for professional users. The DMR operates in 12.5 kHz narrowband channels and uses two-slot TDMA, which is time division multiplexing, to achieve 6.25 kHz channel equivalents, basically one communication path per 6.25 kHz of spectrum. DMR Tier 2 is conventional and DMR Tier 3 is trunked. So DMR offers an easy path to migrate analog FM LMR users to 6.25 kHz digital radio technology. The DMR is fast gaining traction in the Americas and Oceania as a low cost alternative to P25, even though it started as a European standard. So what is Tetra? Tetra is another Etsy standard digital radio solution, but it's much more like a cellular telephone system than any other LMR standard. Tetra standards were published in 1995, the same time as P25 phase one was published in the USA. Tetra only includes trunked operation and operates in 25 kHz wideband channels and uses four slot TDMA to achieve the six and a quarter kHz equivalents. Its primary market is Europe, but it's starting to appear in the US and in Oceania as well. Now we'll have a look at some of the key differentiators between those two standards. So let's start with coverage. DMR has the same coverage as analog FM. So users of analog FM systems upgrading to DMR can basically reuse all of the same sites. By contrast, seven Tetra sites would be needed to cover the same area as two DMR sites. This is a verifiable fact that can easily be proven with simple link budgets. Practical experience though from real life Tetra deployments, UK Airwave, Tetron in Austria and systems in the Netherlands and Germany actually tends to show that Tetra coverage is worse than this. If we look at choice of frequency bands now, DMR can be deployed in any band above 136 MHz that's currently used for analog FM LMR users. So you can choose between VHF, UHF, 700 or 800 megahertz, whatever happens to be best for the terrain you're trying to cover. Analog FM users upgrading to DMR then can basically reuse their existing channels. Tetra though is limited to parts of the spectrum where 25 kilohertz channels are available. In Europe, that's 380 to 430 megahertz only. And in the US, Australia and New Zealand, there are some 800 megahertz channels. So analog FM users migrating to Tetra will probably need to license new channels as well. If we think about fallback to analog FM, then DMR radio equipment has an analog FM fallback mode. So it supports the analog narrowband FM mode as well as the new digital DMR mode. It basically means networks can be upgraded in stages. Tetra has no analog FM fallback mode though. If you look at ease and cost of migration from analog FM, an analog FM user migrating to Tetra will probably need completely new infrastructure, additional sites, and will probably need to license new channels as well. It is in effect start again, whereas an analog FM user migrating to DMR can reuse the existing infrastructure, existing sites, and most likely the existing frequencies. It's a very simple migration in other words. When I say analog FM, I could mean analog FM conventional or trunked. The most common trunked analog FM solution is MPT1327. DMR tier 3 is a natural replacement for those MPT1327 solutions. So to cut a long story short, who is the ideal DMR customer and who is the ideal Tetra customer? You first need to ignore references to the number of Tetra systems versus the number of DMR systems in Europe. It's misleading and only heavily weighted in favour of Tetra. They're both valid professional radio standards, but each is better in certain applications. DMR is ideal for medium volumes of radio traffic over wide coverage areas. For example, it's an excellent fit for mission critical, low cost applications. Grid link and transport networks, which require many small data messages to be received from throughout a large coverage area, are absolutely perfect applications for DMR. Tetra, on the other hand, is designed for higher volumes of radio traffic, but over much smaller coverage areas 
in dense urban environments. If you want more information, just follow the link below at the bottom of this presentation. Well, thank you for watching. I hope it was useful.